to Slow and Steady, the podcast where you get to follow along as we build products in public. Each week, we'll give you an honest peek into our lives as we share our struggles, our wins, and everything in between. I am Benedicta, and I am feeling all over the place. <laughs> and I'm Benedict. Today is November. Uh, no, it's not November. It's October 26th, and I'm feeling excited. You can, I mean, I'm already so excited. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> excited and all over the place. I'm Brian. I am in the Florida Keys right now. This is episode number 113, and I am feeling relaxed. So, and one of the reasons why I'm excited and all over the place and can't get a sentence out straight <laughs> is that we have Matt Wensing on. Hello, Matt. Matt. <laughs> Woo! Hey, everyone. I'm How are Matt you feeling? Wensing. I'm feeling energetic. <laughs> That's Ooh. good. I mean, that fits the overall theme of today's call, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so who? So, yeah, Benedict, why don't you give us an update about your week? I can give an update about my week. So I launched my uh, first boot camp. I still have two more that I should launch. Hopefully going to be able to launch at least one more this week now that I have, have everything like the skeleton stuff in place. So, um, but for the one I have launched, I have four buyers. Woo. Uh, woo. So <laughs> there's uh, like two random buyers that I don't know who are and uh, they have cryptic email addresses. So I'm not been able to like research them. <laughs> and then there, um, there is one who joined this summer who's joining again. And then I know that there's one from who's been watching our streams. Um, and then the one of those random people actually just like went through, I think the beginning of what I can call a funnel, because like, he, it looks like he came over my crowd cat, like my webinars, and then like signed up for all of them and then paid for some of them and then ended up buying the bootcamp. So that feels like a fun. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But so that's good. Uh, we're going to talk a lot more about that next week, hopefully more than four people by next week. Uh, and then <laughs> <laughs> on the personal side, since I did get some like claps and applause for my yoga, uh, my yoga practice, <laughs> I'm just going to say I still do it. It's been six times a week because I've missed ones every weekend the last two weekends. I just plain forgot. But still, six out of seven days. I feel like that is super good. Um, and then I went to a house party. Like an actual party. Do you remember wow. those? What like, with people? With like with people, and there was like <laughs> music and drinking, and people like sitting what? in couches, and uh, it was uh, yeah, it was super cool. Um, so that's why I'm like, and then over to like the sad part. So a little bit over the price. I'm super excited about the boot camp, fun with the party, but then like uh, as I shared before the summer, my mom has Alzheimer, and I mm -hmm. uh, finally hit me. Just took. A year almost. So now I've signed up for the support group uh, that kicks off in like two weeks. So That's all good. over the place. Nice. Yeah. But I feel like yeah. work wise, super energized, but then like not so energized, maybe on the, <laughs> on the family mm. side. But it's going to be ups and downs. Understandably so. Yeah. Yeah. So I just wanted to share you... that since we yeah. talk about those things as well. Yeah, totally. Yeah. That's good that you like took that initiative to look that up and step out there and join it so hope yes. it hope it gets you what you need right now i hope so too yeah. uh, cool. so brian how are you feeling why are you so relaxed I, you're never relaxed oh, man is I'm it a new so, job i'm so relaxed <laughs> we're in the keys i've got a salary job i'm going snorkeling here in like 45 minutes um no seriously yeah i mean we had a <laughs> I, we, we are uh, in, I'd, I've never been to the Florida Keys before. And so um, we are way out here, like in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico, basically, because there is a two lane highway from the tip of Florida, way out here. If, if, Matt, you're nodding your head. Have you ever been out in the Keys? So Yeah. So I actually grew up in South Florida. Um, Did you really? And yeah, I've been there, been there a few times. So okay, um, that's great. Good for you. <laughs> so yeah, so we're like we're like thirty minutes away from Key West. We're not like all the way at the end. Okay. Um. Yeah. So we're on like Big Pine Key is basically nice. what we're in, right near the state. Park. Yeah, that Maybe makes I perfect sense. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. You'll. I was going to say that seems like the perfect place for you guys. <laughs> yeah. So we're. It, it's just 
bizarre that I mean, there's just like this little strip of highway connecting little these causeway. tiny little islands. Yeah, man. So um, <laughs> it's cool. It's great. I, I feel really relaxed. Um, also, because my start date with GitLab got pushed back a week, um, which I was like, oh, sweet. So I'm literally not going to do anything <laughs> this nice. week. I think I have like, I, I do. I have like one call, I think, on Wednesday. Um and then like an onboarding call that's optional on Thursday that I'll probably go to. But um, yeah, just very. Is that a vacation? Very, very is there a vac- like, <laughs> Is that a vacation, yes, yeah. Brian? I Are think, you on the? I think. Vac- I think that is what I'm describing here. Um, <laughs> and then so the uh, <laughs> yes and yet so yesterday we found out that 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 board game contest that we entered backpack into we're in the top ten. Um, nice nice which is like so funny because we've just had zero expectations about the whole thing i think i've mentioned a few times it it has done a great job just in terms of like setting deadlines because it's just me and graham like there's no real deadline we don't have to do anything it's just for fun and so having that you know kind of uh put some dates on the on the calendar for us and yeah now it's now it's in the top 10 there's like a panel of eight judges um other designers who have published games and some people from the publishing company and so they they'll play all of the top 10 games uh twice rank them like give them scores on theme mechanics theme and mechanics working together you know originality etc and then they announce the top three um sometime at the beginning of december so the top three there's a cash prize like a you know cash prize but also the option for the publishing company to sign the game and mm-hmm. publish it um nice so again, still undecided about like I, I remember you mentioned <laughs> that you're not really interested in getting it published with them in particular. Is that still yeah. true, or now that it's closer, you're like, ah, now I kind of want to win this and publish it. <laughs> yes, that one. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So we'll we'll see how it all goes. It's just been it's just been so much fun. It's yeah, it's great. So then the other thing, I started working with a. Uh, developer last week to outsource some stuff for uh, jtbd.app. Um, so just lining that up. Um, Where did you find the developer? Upwork. Yeah, Ooh. so I've used Upwork okay. a ton over the years, and I've had great experience with it overall. Um, definitely some duds, you know, but it feels like you're able to sniff those out fast enough. Um and so, the, yeah, that's so that's the that is definitely the route I'm going to take. Mentioned last week, like I'm just going to be setting you know budget aside on a weekly basis, um, you know, doing product manager <laughs> stuff on on the app, and <laughs> or you know, working with a developer, and not trying to do you know much um, or any of it uh, myself on the development side. Um, so that's that's underway. All. All good stuff. Benedict, nice. what is yeah, so, happening in your world that I, we I had to bring in a whole other co-host <laughs> to help you? Well, if Matt has anything interesting he's done in the week, he could share that yeah, as well. Yeah, I was oh, about that's to true. say, like, that's maybe true. let's talk about Matt There's... first. Oh. <laughs> all right. Awesome. Well, first of all, thanks for... Yeah, I love being here. This is great. I listen to... I'm a, re- I'm a regular, so um, I am... <laughs> I'm energetic uh, and excited to talk about my feelings because I had a really good (laughs) week last week. Um, Nice. uh, Yeah, it was... uh, So we've been focused on how to improve activation as a metric for Summit. And we did that thing where we signed up for the first time for our tool. Oh, for your own product. Yes. For your own product. Just (laughs) every once in a while, just... Go to the homepage and sign up for an account and just see how yeah. you feel. <laughs> and usually, oh. usually you don't end up feeling energetic and excited afterwards. <laughs> you might feel very motivated. Um, and so we, I came away feeling very motivated. And it just, I think this was on maybe Tuesday of last week in the morning. I just shot a note over to Ryan um, and I said, man, we, we, we ju- it's so funny. We had just 
improved kind of the core feature set of the product uh, the previous week. And so we were feeling really high about that and going, <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, we solved all these things. And then I, I was like, wait a minute. We haven't, t- we haven't looked at the whole forest like, and re- redone the flow that gets you into that yeah. core feature mm-hmm. set. You know? So the core feature set was better. But then we, we took a step back and realized, oh, my gosh, like all the, all the signs, if you will, and the guides and the tips and the flow to get to that thing, it's all out of date. Like it's it's all it all feels so last month. <laughs> mm-hmm. So so I basically went in there with a machete and had to you know remove uh, remove a bunch of stuff and realize that we were talking too much and getting in our own way and all mm-hmm. of these things. And so then last week we rolled out that new onboarding flow, that up, updated onboarding flow to now match the feature set that we updated the week before. And so now I'm feeling, now I'm finally feeling good <laughs> about yeah. what Those I launched two, two weeks ago. Those two pieces actually exactly. match now. <laughs> yes, you know? exactly. Yeah. That's, exactly. That's funny. That's funny. It's like you clean the entire, it's like you're cleaning your house and you do an amazing job on the kitchen. And then suddenly you go to your you know, front door and you're like, oh my gosh, this is a, dis- <laughs> wait, this is still a mess. Yeah. And you're like, hmm, you know, my yeah. guests aren't going to give me full credit for all the hard work I did. <laughs> back there if this still looks the way it does. They turn so. around at the front door. <laughs> exactly. yeah. Especially if what? they can't get in. Like if the door doesn't even swing open, yeah, yeah, nobody's exactly. gonna... <laughs> and ours was worse. We had like blinking lights pointing them away from all of our hard work and just like, why did we think, you know, th- this? we thought this was great and so we just whew, got rid of all that. So, so now, you know, we're starting to see, I believe... You know, we're starting to see some of the first run experiences living up to the improvements we wanted to get to three weeks ago when we started planning this work. But uh, so, yeah, so now I'm feeling good. What do what do you consider activation? What is an activated user? So we measure activation. We start measuring activation by um, somebody who visits. So it's a pretty high bar. Somebody who uses the product uh, twice a week or more. So that is a really high bar on purpose because we could be a monthly usage product, I think pretty easily, but we wanted to see if we could do better than that. So our weekly active users, we really think of as twice a week. What we learned was that's like the resulting metric, but the real question is to get them to do that, you got to go into the product looking for, okay, what what correlates highly, like what thing do people need to do that right. correlates highly with that metric, right? Because it's not right. just come back twice a week. It's like, okay, if that were the case, we could just hit them with a bunch of emails or something and say, remember to come back, you know, yeah. not what we want to be. So we have been searching for months for that, some people call aha moment. Mm-hmm. And I think Aha moment was my best way to describe it until last week. But aha moment is also kind of tricky because an aha is like, oh, I get it now. Like I understand the value of this product. But 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 you got to go one level deeper and go, what needs to happen for them to understand the value of your product? It's like even the ha- aha moment is kind of describing the eureka, the resulting feeling that you want them to have <laughs> but it's like you still need to figure out like what is that and the best way i've figured it out now is like what's the tiniest bit of value that you can deliver that shifts everything from you know you make a bunch of marketing promises brand promises landing page promises testimony all these promises right it's all promises and then i think the activation moment for us at least is when they put an object on our boards. We have a board-based thing. Uh, yep. And they experience the feedback of the product generating some results for them for yeah. the very first time. And they go, oh, I just got some value. It's not the whole value. It's not, you know, the whole value prop being delivered, but it's like, ooh, it's not just a promise. It's real. That's and, what and we're that's trying what to get I was people cur- to. Yeah, I was, I was curious but, if but, you had seen Brian. like... 
We're focusing yeah. on Benedict today. <laughs> nah, 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 it's fine. Let's, let's, let's talk about this a little bit. Does Man, that Matt, be wants about... to co- Matt can come back and have his... He can come oh, no. yes. That's last, fair. Last follow-up. <laughs> well, I'll keep last it short. follow-up question, and then we'll get Matt's questions for Benedict. That was, I, w- I was curious if there, if there was like, you know, five, when somebody puts five objects on their canvas, mm-hmm. they, that is... You know, because if you put three, it's not quite enough. Or if you put 10, maybe you feel overwhelmed or something like early on. If you had, if you guys had some sort of target for, you know, we want you to have this many objects because that's when you start to get that uh aha. So the very short, short version is we used to think that it was putting two on the board and connecting them. We realized that was too much work. So we have gotten it down to two clicks, basically. You can click a little icon and then click the board and then we automatically generate results. So if we can just get people to do those two clicks, cool. Yeah. They see something. Yeah, that's that's the goal. Thanks for the questions. But totally. <laughs> I have questions totally. too for well, this. Yes, guy. that's why you're <laughs> on, right? So that's why you're here. <laughs> I got to grill my friend. <laughs> so Benedict, why is Matt on? Um so Matt is on because, and it will not sound like it makes any sense at first, but we launched a marketing feature today. Uh, we made a deadline. The deadline was very helpful to get some last minute features in or some fixes in and changes in. And we finally pulled the plug and, uh, well, not pulled the plug, well, whatever metaphor. We finally <laughs> launched it today. Um, it's been, an, it's been released since uh, mid last week. Um, uh, I think we enabled it on Wednesday and then disabled it Wednesday noon because uh, it broke a bunch of things. <laughs> there was still a little bit of a performance issue with the larger accounts, but I was able to fix that and then we rolled it out. Um, we announced it to our customers on Thursday and I feel like that was a little bit of a mistake um, because um, we got some good feedback in terms of, yeah, that's... Um, that's exciting. I want to use this. And then 10 minutes later, it's like, I can't seem to find any documentation for this. <laughs> well, how is this supposed to work? Or stuff like, yeah, I so I've created a form. How do I embed it into my website? And we were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all, we know what, we're not quite there yet. <laughs> so we may mm. be, we may be announced it to our customers a little bit too early. I don't think it was a mistake of just enabling it. But telling people about it, it was probably too early. We should just have skipped on that part. Uh, but by today, like docs are in place, marketing pages in place. You can now embed forms on your website. Um, so it's mostly feature complete in a way. I mean, there's still a bunch of stuff missing, but at least it's usable now. And uh, we just announced it on Twitter. And by the time this episode comes out on Wednesday, we're probably on Product Hunt. So... Vote, awesome. vote, vote, vote. So Go yes. to Product Hunt and yeah. look at it, maybe. <laughs> Upvote. Upvote. But you were saying Matt had some great questions for you. So I don't know. If, in case we didn't have any, we now have Matt on to. to yes, uh, exactly. We had a good conversation <laughs> just leading up to the recording. Um, yeah. Because he, I was... he was kind of involved in this entire journey <laughs> from very early on without realizing it. <laughs> yeah, I think, and, and you're right, it was back at MicroConf Europe, um, 2019, 19, must have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I remember. I vividly remember you. the situation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, well, I was launching Summit back then. It was the kind of my initial, you know, release the product year it took all you know year to build something but anyway i remember signing up for convert kit and then seriously considering user list but then saying you know well okay i feel like i've already got convert kit i've got you know hundreds of email addresses in there i wish that you guys had given me an option of getting those contacts into user list from the get-go because i could even start using these marketing email lifecycle features etc and uh i told you in the slack this morning that you're in Jane's response to me. What I remember hearing was kind of like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what I remember saying as well. So it's probably accurate. <laughs> it's like, eh. And so when I saw the tweet this morning, I was like, 
okay, how did the, eh, which I've been kind of hitting for years. Cause then we talked later earlier this year about, you know, you guys are doing some fundraising and it's like, Oh, you know, think about that Tam, how much bigger it'd be if you could get people early on. And, you know, I think it's just there for you. Like, maybe a little bit less, eh, but still like not committed. So then I had to ask like founder to founder, you know, what, what I said, well, I'm curious why you think it took years for you guys to change your minds. That was, that was what I asked. And it wasn't so much like, why did it take so long? Like the bad negative thing is like, tell me what the strongest reason against doing this sooner was because I trust you guys are smart people, but from the outside, I just had to know like, what was the strong point against doing this? Because it seemed like a good idea years ago from the outside. Yeah. So what was um, it? Good one. <laughs> so I guess there, there are multiple things that played into it. Um, I think one of the things was that when we started out to to build user list, we were, like we wanted to solve one problem, and that was basically lifecycle messaging. So everything that happens after you sign up, because we felt like there's 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 an opportunity there. There aren't that many tools tools that do that part really well. So we wanted to focus on that first, and that of course makes it easier to just like cut scope and then be like, okay, we're just doing this little part. We're not we're not even trying to comp compete with like the Mailchimp, the Drips, the Convert Kits. We're just starting on our own little playground over here where there isn't that much competition. Maybe I mean, in a way, you can do all of the stuff with other tools as well, but like we wanted to solve this for for SaaS in a in a very isolated manner i guess so that 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 played into it as well and also i think 2017 when we were starting out i think gdpr was about to go into effect and there was a lot of uncertainty about like what does this mean for email marketing how is it supposed to work with like opting into an email list what are you allowed to do what are you not allowed to do what features does a product need to like play with that well i remember at the time drip released like a super elaborate consent management solution that works differently mm. on the U eu and the us and like a lot of crazy stuff and that at the time it was really sounded a little, a, yeah, yeah it was way too team. overwhelming yeah so it was way easier for us to say it's not really the problem that we wanted to solve anyways it's also very potentially very complex and uncertain so let's just ignore it entirely <laughs> just pretend it doesn't happen and just do um do stuff post sign up where it's way way clearer that you have consent to send them email that's relevant to the transaction between you and them and you don't need double opt-in or anything like it because they just bought your product of course they are interested in hearing about it um so yeah, that that's was why we didn't do it in the first place, and um, we stick to it f for maybe longer than we should have. <laughs> mm. Yeah, because I imagine when like the tiny seed funding came in, now your you know your appetite gets a little bit bigger. At least your vision gets a little bit clearer in terms of well, if we're holding back on that because we're worried we're not going to be around in a certain amount of time or if we're holding back on that because dot, dot. there's a lot of reasons that you start to question yourself, right? So you've been through, I mean, talking about years ago, you've been through multiple cycles of internal planning where you kind of probably re-question your assumptions around resources and scope and you started to get traction on user lists like that vision that you had, that beachhead. But was this piece part of the roadmap and vision all along or was it, and this might be putting you on the spot too much, but it's like, I hope we don't have to do that, right? But if we do, we're going to do it right, right? Like, was it, yeah, how do you feel I think about for, this? For quite a long time, there seemed so, like, there were, we could probably have done it sooner and we sh probably should have done it sooner. But for for the longest time, there was so much, like, untapped potential in just the, post sign up stuff like for example mm -hmm. the one of the big things there is um the the company uh, tracking feature because to this day we're probably still the only one maybe one of a handful that tries to solve this and mm -hmm. we figured that we should probably 
just try to solve this particular problem at like first before we venture out into the the thing that yeah. everyone is expecting us to do. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Why do things yeah, people expect? Like, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I mean, the tricky part about this is um, we got like in the early days. Of course, we we asked people about this, and we got very mixed signals in mm. that regard. That mm. like, mm. I mean, don't have hard numbers, but it felt like fifty percent were like, yes, um, I absolutely want all my marketing email and my lifecycle email and everything in one tool. That's the one thing I want to do. And there was this other part that was, that was like, yes, I absolutely want two separate tools for two separate tasks. <laughs> so I want my marketing tool and I want my lifecycle messaging tool. So there were good reasons for both directions. And one of them with all the other stuff considered doesn't seem like the easier way to go. So we decided to do it that way. Yeah, I that's a really interesting. I, I've, I came into it saying, please bundle these things because I do not perceive any benefit in having to go through the mental exercise of choosing a provider for landing page contact collection. (laughs) And then also like lifecycle email marketing. Like, I don't, I don't perceive a benefit. You know, to me, it's almost like having to do one plus one there is like less than two because you're making me make all these choices and integrations potentially and doing more work on the back end. Whereas other people who are like, oh, I'm a maven when it comes to this piece, stay out of my, stay out of this zone because you're not, I don't want a half baked version of your thing anyway. You'd be crazy yeah. to come compete with this tool. I think you get very mixed feedback because you're talking to different people who have a different ability to wring value out of different pieces of that chain, yeah. right? So I'm a big fan of bundling when I don't perceive a value in having all this choice. It's just exo- it's fatigue almost, um, and that's why yeah. I joked in the chat with you this morning. Uh, I was like, "Well, <clears throat> you know, it's coming, right? <laughs> it's like you're gonna have a little chat widget soon." <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, it's um, it's almost like build a, a better intercom center? slowly, right? Yeah. Why why do I want to choose that? Yeah. Who knows? I mean, for now, I think we're. We're good with like big changes for now. Yeah. I see Benedict's eyes like this big for those that can't see. It's like, uh. But do you think that it I depends mean, I c- on the size of the organization? Because at least as a, you know, like a tiny team for my SaaS, I don't want to be learning so many tools, and also I don't have like right. the marketing resources to to kind of benefit from these specific the specific tools like the drip or whatever. Um, do you know, like, feel like the people who responded, they wanted separate tools were larger organizations and the folks who wanted bundling were smaller SaaS teams or no? Like I had conversations in both directions at that okay. particular microconf in 2019. So <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I don't think yeah. it it matters that much. It's probably just a matter of personal preference. Mm-hmm. Um so and ultimately, one, I mean, yeah. so who is your yeah. like main customer? What's your like? Is it developers who create SaaS? Do you want the people using it being developers or marketing folks? <laughs> That's a bit another big question. Um, I think in the past we have been very we're well, not really focused, but like our perfect customer has been like the developer type founder or at least a very tech savvy team um and i think we're slowly moving not not necessarily moving away from that but um making it more convenient for like people with less technical knowledge and um like more the marketer type of uh, customer um but i think that's still a long process because like we regularly get calls with customers that um or potential leads that are like marketing leads at their companies and stuff like that and then they ask about hey but i want to do a b testing and i need super fine grained reporting about every single number in your entire tool and also what about this what about that and i think there's still a long way to go to really cater to that particular segment but Ultimately, yeah, I think that's where it needs to go, as painful as it sounds, because when we started out, we wanted to build a 
cool email marketing tool for small little bootstrappers like us. Mm. But it doesn't look like that's a sustainable route to go down. <laughs> oh, but that's oh, because I see these other marketing tools and even like ConvertKit. They add on these features that are def are like supposed to make the life of the non-tech user easier. And it just makes everything worse <laughs> because because <laughs> they don't manage to make it proper. I was in ConvertKit today, like setting up automations, and they, you know, they had you had their what you see is what you get kind of editors, and it was I was trying to I like deleted the title. The title came back because it's like a super clever form input, um, and all of these things that are supposed to like make it easier when they're not like a hundred percent. It just makes the job harder and also but everything has to be like visual your drag and drop things to like make your sequence instead of just like making a sequence <laughs> so yeah as just just me here like still remember us developers who just who wants it to be like if this then that and then and we can we can yeah we can stay that sorry i i, I think what makes me very excited about this move is that you can bring the same level of quality and attention to like that solid foundation to this space, let's call it this adjacency. And that's to me, that's the big in market opportunity is to, is to counter position to what Benedicta just said and say, do you want the user list version of that? We're providing that now. And it might be yeah. feature. It might be much less feature rich, but the features that are there have that Apple just work uh, feeling about them. That's to me the opportunity and not to have a high bar, but think about this too. I mean, if you go to ConvertKit's website, you can count the number of engineers they have. So there's something to be said for the foundation being prepared for this kind of tooling, as opposed to this thing caught fire. It's really popular now we have to like just start building more features on top of it and you get this like <laughs> this snowball uh, a data model and and technical stack mm -hmm. that like was never really designed to be a uh, tens of millions of dollar company <laughs> you know it's just like but it's going you know and it's going because you got all this top of funnel so i have i have a question for you so that's what gets me really excited and why i'm excited for you because i think the long game for you is very bright right in the short term, what I'm curious about, and I always love to ask you and Jane this question, like what metric about your business do you hope that this helps with? Is this going to improve leads? Is this going to improve conversion rates? Is this going to improve retention? Like what about your business model do you feel like this is going to impact maybe most directly? I really hope it will be impacting growth a little bit. I mean, I said, I mentioned this to you earlier, like in my dream world, I look at um, at our MRR chart uh, six months from now and be able to point to today or this mm -hmm. week because you can clearly <laughs> see that there's a, the growth rate increased a little bit. But I also hope um, that it will help with conversion rate, especially from, uh, yeah, from try to pay it because I feel like the way the product works right now, the it's hard to adopt, and like a, a lot of trial cancellations we get are stuff like, "I'm not ready yet. We're not quite there yet with the product. The product isn't mm -hmm. launched yet," and stuff like that. And that I feel like a lot of that plays into the yeah, it's a lifecycle tool. I mean, it you have to integrate it into your application for it to make sense. Mm -hmm. But now with that new part, and we're going to have like CSV imports and stuff sometime soon now to get like to minimum value from the tool you just import your list once and send a broadcast that's right and uh, the the barrier is way lower for that part than it is for what we are doing or what you used to do so if so. i put on my if i put on my summit hat you basically went all the way from the end and then you, I, by the end of what you just said, you told me what I was wanting to know, which is this yeah. is going to improve. This is going to improve activation rate, hopefully, uh, which is to say it'll improve adoption rate, and then that improves conversion rate, which then improves growth or revenue, right? So revenue is the ultimate result you hope to see. But in the short term, the quickest test you're going to be able to run is to see: 
do we see more people getting getting hooked on this feature set so yeah. that they're going and so you actually you're moving into the land of product qualified leads actually as opposed to trial based kind of salesy leads like they're a good fit if we hit them at the right time with the right messaging at the right moment and they're ready to do this adoption effort now you're like you know what we're just going to cast a net you just have your leads list right and when you're ready you can convert so then I actually question are you moving towards a free tier do you already have a free tier uh we we never had a free tier we had a nine dollar tier for a little while oh, that's but right that didn't work at all okay so you're, think, you're thinking question, for that that period of time where you just want like a wait list form is that what you're thinking about matt like as for yeah free... i mean do you have the opportunity to to hook them with some very low cost value or very low not expensive to deliver value for you guys but now that i've got my list in there of course i'm going to pay you to not have to move it elsewhere right yeah like for like at this very moment we are not planning any pricing changes um but it already came up on twitter like when we announced yeah, it like yeah. question very number natural. three was like <laughs> that sounds great but 99 dollars per month is a little bit too expensive for me um do you have a lower yeah. cost option it's such a natural i mean that's that's your on ramp and to me on ramps go all the way down to the ground right they're just tiniest little curve all the way down it's your on-ramp to me you know the 99 dollars is like a wall you know it's like well i'll get over that <laughs> but like don't make me pay for the virus scan maybe pay for the virus removal right like that's the yeah that's the part right <laughs> and i like we get that part but having been burned by being too cheap in the last two years i'm not entirely mm. sure we're going down that particular route anytime soon yeah yeah could i think i, I mean who, who knows i mean we're not set on this but um for now I, we just keep it <laughs> the witness uh, i'm done with the witness your honor i was just gonna ask benedict like how how hefty of an engineering challenge would it be to give somebody you know a free trial and you can have 100 users thousand emails per month nine dollars a month 500 users you know two thousand emails or, or whatever wherever you want to set like the cargo limit you know for those things so they get they have access to a hundred percent of the features but a small percentage of usage of those features and as they grow they're happy to continue to spend because their business is growing and like matt is saying the on-ramp goes all the way to the floor <laughs> Yeah. Um, you don't have to make the I decision mean, right now, but we'd nah, love it if you I, I would. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just I'm <laughs> curious if it's like, you know what? Yeah, that's the, the tooling is there or uh, no, we're just not set up for that. That's a that's a hassle. The tooling is there. Like, and I mean, honestly, that's exactly how it works. Just that the base price is 99 instead of zero. Mm -hmm. um, we could w test this relatively quickly. <laughs> Um, just I just realized what we're experience. doing. We're planting the flag so that two years from now we can talk about this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and be like, Benedict That's, said, uh, <laughs> just, yeah. uh, just, we'll, have, we'll have it on tape. <laughs> I'm just curious, I'm not, why, why do you think it took you two years to decide to... <laughs> 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 it's great. I mean, yeah, ultimately... And this might go, this might play out the same way, but at some point it became obvious that this is the right thing to do. And maybe it will be the same thing with the pricing. For now, I feel like there's more opportunity, and I might be wrong about this, in just like building the features that the, like the marketers of the larger companies ask for mm -hmm. and put them behind an even more expensive tier and try to go a little bit more up market than down market. Um, because as as unfair as it sounds, like people just thinking about launching a product and starting a small mailing list aren't necessarily the best customers for the business. Mm -hmm. Totally yeah. fair. I also think that the biggest risk you guys have 
in your space is not that there isn't demand for a free collect email addresses tool. We know that there is. So you're not really learning anything by doing that. You're just opening up the top of funnel. And in that sense, that's never going away. Like you can't open that door in two years. The bigger risk is how much money can you get out of people LTV? Can you build the features that those power users want, et cetera? And then, yeah, so maybe that is the right answer is you just build that ramp down over time because you're not learning a lot. I think the counterpoint is if you had the kind of business where it's not clear that anybody wants to use this tool regularly, like having a free tier can really help de-risk that because if they won't even use it for free, <laughs> they're definitely not going to pay for it, right? You don't have that problem. So I think I think I'll cut you a little slack for a couple of years at least. <laughs> <laughs> we but see when how it com- goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now we have that on tape as well. <laughs> yeah, I have to be quiet. <laughs> I, d- I definitely I love the approach of we we actually want to stay focused on people who are willing to spend ninety nine bucks a month for, for the for the product like that's our that's our market we don't want to kind of open up yet anyway um, you know a, a free trial and all that that all that comes with it well established totally get it so then I'm what I'm am curious about then is the people who do sign up at ninety nine dollars a month. Um, willing to spend money for services. What are, are those people who are coming in with hundreds or thousands of users and getting them, you know, imported and activated is your biggest challenge or is just finding them the biggest challenge? Like what, if if you're going to stay with the $99 price point and you've, you've rolled out these new features, what do you perceive as the biggest challenge to widening the funnel as it currently is then? Not entirely sure I can answer that question just yet because, I mean, yeah, I get, like top of the funnel is still a challenge, I guess. I mean, it doesn't, we didn't solve that with, with this particular, well, maybe who knows, I mean, Signals are still mixed on that regard. Like uh, one person on Twitter was a little bit surprised that we launched this feature today because they assumed that we had it since day one. <laughs> so mm. maybe <laughs> maybe it's maybe it's not maybe it wasn't that big of a problem that we ha- didn't have this feature. And um, like uh, what I th- guess what I'm trying to say is. We kind of assumed that people wouldn't cho- choose user list because it wasn't able to do this particular task. But then again, maybe it wasn't that obvious that it doesn't, doesn't do this particular task. And that wasn't even the reason why they didn't sign up in the first place. Oh, interesting. I guess that's a question that we, that we have to answer down the road. Mm-hmm. But, right. um, yeah, right. I, I think actually yeah. Brian's question triggered one more question in my mind. Are you saying $99 a month? I imagine if somebody has 10,000 contacts on one of these lists, they're going to pay more. Is that correct? Or do you still have yes, to revisit a, your pricing model? That's the base price. Uh, okay, I think okay. It's uh, 99 for 5,000 users, and then it goes up uh, with um, $10 per additional batch of 1,000 users. So it scales infinitely, basically. So d- do you have the same scaling? Uh, you have the same pricing dimension on both customers or users of my product and contacts on my mailing list those are the same um unit? yes that's basically the unit is records in our database okay um kind of like a hubspot which also, model which also i mean that's the other part why we're excited about this particular feature i think your arpu is going to go up is actually what this is going to yeah. do for you yeah so yeah, if, even conversion rate aside you don't need to convert more people if your arpu is is climbing yeah, so exactly. Have, and yeah, and great. like having marketing email in there just increases the the rate that the number will be uh, inclining because people will import their lists, people will have new signups to their mailing list. And those have value. And so they'll and, pay for that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's okay. There we go. What does that's ARPU stand beautiful. for? <laughs> Average <laughs> revenue Average per revenue. user. Yes. Ah. Per yeah. customer in your case. <laughs> yep. So if yours right now is I'm just gonna make up a number 121 bucks. Like you could easily That's see very this accurate, to be honest. <laughs> hey, I had a That's feeling. 
I had a feeling. Um, I've been in this space a while. Uh, you could see that dramatic. Uh, what's going to happen is you're going to have whales in your customer base that you don't have right now. And they're going to be people who already pay, I mean, $1,000 a month to maintain their email address list or the contacts list. And they're going to use your tool instead. Potentially, like you have the potential to grow into whales who are paying thousands a month for their email marketing. Um, yeah. So that's great. But and that requires that. no additional so too, marketing yeah. effort, right? Yeah. <laughs> Tech question, though. What has actually changed? Uh, not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, this is one of the reasons why we decided to go that, down that route, because late last year, you know, we were, MRR wasn't growing that much, and we were kind of like, hmm, yeah, something's wrong. Like, something clearly isn't working. And back then, changed a lot of customer interviews. Um, and we basically got two key requests from that. One was like having marketing and everything in, in, in one tool. That's the thing we decided to do. And the other one was, yeah, I want to have like a customer support tool and uh, a chat widget and uh, basically a support help desk. And um, looking at both, it was very obvious that one was relatively easy to do and the other was like basically building an entirely new product. So the decision was relatively easy to yeah, go down the marketing route because on the tech side, what we did was we removed a requirement in the API. Um, so identifier is no longer a required field. Um, and we added a form builder and a forms endpoint where people could like, yeah, have a hosted forms page or embed like a, a HTML form into their website and put the action to user list and get subscribed via that part. Yeah, because um, I, just looked at the, I just looked at the documentation. It looks like there is no JavaScript, right, for your form? Right now there isn't, yeah. Uh, it's is, just like embed the uh, raw HTML to your website. <laughs> which is amazingly fresh. It's great. Because coming from the Jamstack community, people trip up on form on trying to embed all of these other uh, services because they all have their JavaScript trackers that they want you to kind of add or they have JavaScript features. And I think it's for tracking um, that they want you to add to be able to kind of use use their their stuff just out of the box. So that was super cool because I was like, I need to make a, you know, like a tutorial on how to embed <laughs> this into Gatsby. And then it's like, oh, I almost don't have to because you don't make it hard. I'm going to make it anyway, though. <laughs> but uh, Yeah, I guess we're probably, I mean, let's see. Like, this is one thing we, we'll probably do based on customer feedback. Like, I think the biggest downside of just, like, providing raw HTML is that it doesn't give you any styling and no way to change stuff. So if you change the titles or whatever in, in user list, it doesn't update on your website and stuff like that. So... There's something to be said about having a JavaScript solution. But yeah, like we wouldn't have gained anything from building that before the launch. Yeah. Um, we can still build that down the road. Um, so that's what we're going to do. But also keep the simple solution. Like you can give, yeah. since you do have technical users, you can like give both options, right? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, it's still going to be, this will be supported forever, I guess. But um We'll probably have to pile onto that um, for the yeah less technical crowd, I guess. Hmm. Cool. Well, congratulations. I think we need to re-spin <laughs> the feelings wheel and ask how you feel now after all these questions. <laughs> Did terrified, you feel... terrified, terrified, totally terrified. <laughs> Great job, guys. <laughs> Great job. No, nah, it's good. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, let's see how it just like, goes. It's I the mean, opposite of a support group. It's like, come on! <laughs> <laughs> they fired holes in, in me for 40 minutes. Yeah, it's great. No, I'm not really. I mean, that, those were good questions. Um, so thanks for coming on, Matt. <laughs> yeah, thanks, You're welcome. thanks for coming on. Benedict, seriously, congrats. This will be really fascinating to see what what you all observe over the next six-ish months. Um and good yeah. luck on good luck on the launch. And if you're all are listening, go to Product Hunt and upvote <laughs> uh, upvote user list if you listen on Wednesday. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Yeah. 
All right, Matt, so, thanks for joining yeah. us. Yeah, so thanks cool. again. Benedict, any, anything yeah. else before we sign off? No, not from me. Cool. All right. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye. Bye.